My name is Carolyn Johnson. and this is part three of my video, Photon Cannon, a Balloon Do. In the first part, I demonstrated how a less than five milliwatt laser can pop a balloon. I also discussed my science fair project in detail. This part of my video is aimed at people that might participate in the science fair, and it focuses on details on my science fair board. This is my poster board. Its title is Photon Cannon A Balloon Do. I should have made my title a little bit more visible. That's just one thing I might have changed. Now I'm going to step through the parts of my science fair board. You'll see some things I did well and you'll want to do and other parts I could have improved upon. Hypothesis. A hypothesis guides your research. It is important to state a hypothesis on your board. It is not as important whether your hypothesis is right or wrong as if you do your research well. Abstract. You need to have an abstract on your science fair board. Your abstract should answer why you did your experiment, what your procedures were, and what your results were. Background. It is important to have a background section. Background sections show what other people have done on your experiment. In my case, it was important to have a background section because it showed that many people thought that there was no way you could pop a balloon using a less than 5 milliwatt laser. If somebody had already found a way to pop a balloon using a less than 5 milliwatt laser, my experiment would have much less merit. Bibliography It's important to have a bibliography. Bibliography show what sites and sources you use. A bibliography might show any books, websites, or news articles, and any other sources you use during your experiment. In my state, you can go to a library and order books from other libraries. This helped me obtain information on light and lasers. I found that the science first said that you had to have a release saying that none of your photographs on your board were copyrighted. All the photographs on my board were either taken by myself, my mom, or my grandma. Before I started my experiment, I wanted to figure out which of my three laser pointers was the most p powerful. All of these sections on my board have to do with this preliminary part of my experiment. Here I describe the methods I used to perform my experiment. In addition, I show the materials I used and the independent and dependent variable. In this data plot, you can see I'm using color to make it easy for the observer to see what is going on with the red and green lasers over time. I used three pictures to explain my experimental setup. The first two showed how the laser's light was shining on the back of the thermometer. The third was a close-up of my thermometer, and it showed how I could use close-ups to be able to read small changes in temperature. I also had my thermometer on the board so I could compare how close I could, I could read the temperature on my regular thermometer and with the camera. At the bottom of my board, I have two experiments. The first one actually addresses whether I could pop a balloon using a less than five milliwatt laser. This paragraph describes the procedures I tried to use to pop a balloon. Down at the bottom are the materials I used in my experiment. One of the things judges look for is whether you found problems along the way and tried to solve them. To begin with, I was not able to pop a balloon using my less than 5 milliwatt laser. This is a diagram from my laboratory notebook. It shows all the possible problems I might be encountering and all the ways I thought I was able to solve them. As before, I used pictures to help make my board look more interesting and clarify my experiments. Here I am setting up the experiment. This shows the laser's light shining through the white balloon. With other balloons, it didn't shine through as much. This shows the black dot on the balloon. It shows that the laser actually popped the balloon because it's on the edge. This picture shows the experiment in detail. It shows the lens and the ruler. It also shows that the light doesn't go through the black balloon as well. Sometimes it's important to include different variables in your experiment. This is the variable size of balloon. On my board, this is summarized as one sheet, but we will look at the different parts separately. Here we have a summary statement for my experiment. As well, we also have the independent variable, the size of the balloon, and the dependent variable, the time it takes the balloon to pop. Then I showed my data with different sizes of balloons, and finally I showed my conclusion with noted that Size is an extremely important factor in how long it took my balloon to pop.
The other variable I looked at was the color of the balloon. As before, I show my results on one sheet of paper, but we're going to look at it a little bit closer. Here, I have my independent variable and my dependent variable. Then, I show a data table showing my results. And finally, I have my conclusion. You want to come up with a way of presentation that makes it easier for people to understand your results. I chose to make a bar graph on the color of my balloon experiment. As you can see, my bar correlates with what color my balloon was, so it's easy to follow. This graph shows how long it took each color balloon to pop. The two objects which I included on my board for interest were the thermometer and the lens. The lens was actually removable so that the, if the judges wanted to, the judges could look through my lens at my pictures in greater detail. It's important to keep a laboratory notebook as you go along. Your laboratory notebook should be brought with you to the science fair. It should be bound and it should have a signature at the bottom of each page. I didn't do so well about this ads pack, but I will do better next time. It's important to have a conclusion. A conclusion should either support or reject your hypothesis. It's also important to think about how you would improve your experiment if you did it another time. And finally, it's good to show what applications in the real world does your experiment have. How does it impact others? This has been a review of the parts of my science fair board. Thanks for watching. I hope that this may help someone who is thinking about doing a science fair board in the future. I had a lot of fun making a science fair project. I also had fun at the science fair, where I talked to a lot of judges and other participants. It was also fun making my movie, which I had a lot of assistance on. This article in the newspaper says I caught top honors at the science fair. I wouldn't call this exactly true. The people who really got top honors, in my mind, were the people who went on to state and intel. I only went on to regionals. This is the highest a sixth grader can go, but someday I hope to give out the alumni award from the intel science fair. In the meantime, I wish you good luck on your science fair project as well.